Jeremiah chapter 10. Let me tell you about Jeremiah chapter 10. Went to a pastor's house in Preston, Connecticut. Walked in his living room. I don't say nothing. And there's his Christmas tree. And he looked at me and said, you, know, you would quote Jeremiah chapter 10, wouldn't you? No. Went to a church in uh, Holly Hill, Florida. We went from Jeremiah chapter 9 to Jeremiah chapter 11 with a little Christmas tree sitting on the piano. He didn't even touch it at all. Another church in Oak Hill, Florida. You think that Jeremiah chapter 3 is a Christmas tree. I tell you it's not the Christmas tree. A couple Christians I knew. Well, you know, we're going to keep our Christmas tree. I didn't say nothing. Where? I must have written on my forehead Christmas tree or something. And yet Jeremiah is one of them chapters in the Bible. It's, it attacks you. It says, hear the word of the Lord. By the way, Jeremiah is still preaching at the gate of the temple. This is a long message. Listen, I've gone two, three hours. Going 30 minutes, half hour, hour preaching. Lord speaking unto you, O house of Israel. Okay, this is directed at Israel. But Jeremiah is a, a book that's written to today, the church age, period. Not written to the church age, but the things that are happening in Jeremiah are happening in the church. It's happening in America. And it's happening in the world that we can have that and I am doing that spiritual application to the church, to America, and to the world. Thus save the Lord. That'd be important what the Lord says. Not so today. Learn not the way of the heathen. Now, heathen is neither Jewish, Israel, it's not Christian, it's Gentile. I was once a Gentile. I'm not a Gentile no more. I'm a Christian. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Oh, we're getting the earthquakes. We're getting all this. The rapture's going to happen. And we're in the last days. Why is it that you are looking to the times and signs of the second advent as the time of the rapture? And yet you completely avoid the the reference to Jeremiah to the Christmas tree. Nowhere does the Bible say earthquakes and, and, and all that is going to be the sign of the rapture. Nothing points to the rapture sign. The rapture is going to happen. All them signs and all those wonders are to the people that seek after signs, the Jewish people in the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period, that would lead to the events of the coming of Jesus Christ the second time. And when we talk about Jesus coming at, at Revelation 19, we don't say that's the third coming of Jesus. Though so Jesus does come in the air to meet his church. So the Christians today, oh, we're the last days, the signs of the times. Jeremiah said, hey. And he's looking to the Jews who are expecting signs. Hey, listen, hey, talking to Israel, verse 1. For the heathen are dismayed at them. So when you act like all oh, the signs of times and all that, you're acting like a heathen. You're not acting like a Christian. For the customs of the people that run back to the heathen, that's the closest subject context, not Israel, are vain, empty, no value, worthless. 
It has no value. Okay, so what we're going to talk about has no value at all. For one, God is a tree out of the forest. You know somebody who cuts out a tree in the forest? The work of the hands of workmen with an axe. I know we use chainsaws to the hanging. You know, you can't say it's a Christmas tree because we use a chainsaw. We go down to the store, we bought an artificial one. They deck it with silver and gold. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. La 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 la. Interesting word. I wonder what your modern Bible says. How come your deck the halls matches the King James 1611 Bible? A deck with silver and gold. I remember Rudolph the Red, 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 Red Nose Reindeer as a little boy. I remember uh, Cornelia. Interesting name. And he was he was the the, the, the ore hunter. You know what he said? Silver and gold. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. Why does he come out of King James 1611 Bible? Why is a Christmas cartoon about Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer? And the guy is searching a silver ring. Interesting. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it moves not. Christmas tree stand. You don't want your Christmas tree to fall over. And the old-fashioned Christmas tree stand, when you take two pieces of wood and make a cross, and you would nail it at the bottom of the tree to hold that tree up, and you stick it in the corner. You know what I mean? They're upright as a palm tree. If it's not upright as a palm tree, you have got cats in your house. Then it's on the floor, and all the bolts are all in a messy place. You know the palm tree? Do you know what was on the wallpaper of the pattern of the temple? There were cherubims and there were palm trees. They're copying from the temple. They must need be born. You got to carry it around. You it won't get up and walk itself. You got to bring it in the house, and you got to bring it from the house to the the front sidewalk to the garbage men to come and get it because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, and, and I, but, well, you know, the Bible says be not afraid of them, but they cannot do evil. Unless you don't put water in it and it burns your house down. Or kitty cat and doggy drink all the water and it dries out and catches the house on fire. Here also is them to do good. Alright. But the problem is does God want us to worship other gods? No, we have a jealous God. And if you check our website, we got the things on Christmas and taboos and all that. When you're looking at the Christmas tree or the Yule log, and you look at the paganism and the small G-O-D-S version of that, it has nothing to do with Christianity at all. And I'm not going to get much into it. it, it okay, it, it's vain. It doesn't do nothing. It, it can be pretty, but the foundation is pagan. The Yule log, that when the family goes to bed, dad takes the Yule log out of the fireplace and puts a brand new one. You wake up in the morning, oh, the resurrection log. No, you just had a magic trick by dad. Okay, okay, that's no problem. You know, okay, it's foundation, it's paganism and all that, and, you know, but we don't worship the gods and we like it, it's pretty and all that. Okay, I go in the kitchen, I make cookies. I like 
still trading cookies. I say, look, I made some cookies. Have some. Mm, these cookies are great. All right. As, as the Christmas tree, well, let me tell you, the Christmas tree is mixed in paganism. It's surrounded with paganism, false gods, and all that, blah, blah, blah. Well, that cookies that you made, those cookies were made, you see, I took the toilet water I didn't flush. And the toilet water I didn't flush, I made your cookies. Oh, well, I mean, it's just toilet water. It's just got some other little things in it. That's not going to harm you. What you have in the toilet water is vain. <laughs> and you've got preachers and Christians defending their sins against Jeremiah chapter 10. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. Oh, and I had to. We don't worship it. You bow down to put that water in it. You bow down to get that gift. That's not the gift of God. And then you cry in January when you get the credit card bills for what you couldn't afford. And by the way, it never sends around Jesus Christ. We don't know when his birthday was. And the gifts didn't come to me was what, two, three, four years old? There's that. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, see, no matter what, it's to God. It's to God, the Lord. Thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Oh, we got a great Christmas tree this year. Look how full it is. Look how it takes up the whole. Who would not fear thee, O King, capital K, of nations, King of kings, Lord of lords? For to thee does it appear. I pertain, excuse me. For it, I hate when they move the word next to that one. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations, Christmas tree, wise men, you sure don't get the wise men showing up at Christmas with the biblical story of Jesus Christ because they came later. But when you got a Christmas tree and wise men, it comes out of Jeremiah chapter 20. There's the wise men. There's the king. There it is. All their kingdoms. There is none like unto thee. But they are altogether brutish, animal like, and foolish. <laughs> The stock is a doctrine of vanities. The stock, what's that? That's that tree. That's what a stock is. You know, when, when the Indians take a stock of a tree and they carve it into a totem pole. And they found this recently, I forget where it was now. They found this idol, this image, and it was a tree and they just carved into it. That's the stock. Silver spread into plates. It's brought from Tarsus. Tarsus known for silver. Gold from Upaz. Bible speaks of Upaz and gold. The work of a workman. Of the hands of the founder. Blue and purple is their clothing. Uh, that's the clothing that Mary wears. And Mary was not rich because she could not bring the lamb. She had to bring the lesser to the temple for her sins. Leviticus chapter 12, the turtle doves or pigeons. And blue and purple was, was expensive clothing. That's not what Mary had. But Mary in her pictures, in her glorified statues and all that. How come we got from the Christmas tree to wise men and now we're at Mary? And 
They are all the work of cunning men, men of skill. They're expert teeth. I can't think his name. Uh, Demetrius? I could be wrong. The silversmith's trying to Diana. Great is Diana. And oh, boys, you know what Paul's doing to our craft? No one's buying our Diana statue. But the Lord is the true God, not that statue. He is a living God, not dead. Even Jesus said to him, God's not the God of the dead, he's the God of the living. An everlasting king, run that back to Jesus. Run that to Jesus because Jesus is the everlasting king on the throne of David. So go tell the Jehovah Witnesses to take a jump, a swan dive, if they're not saved, into the lake of fire. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. Earthquakes in mighty places. The nation shall not be able to, the nation shall, the nations shall not be able to abide at his indignation. There's the second advent, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and earth. I wonder if you would put Darwinism, evolution, uh, Allah. Even they shall perish from the earth, from under these heavens. All those gods are going into the lake of fire that burns forever. Because they're all one God, the devil. Why has Mary got so many names? Asterisk, Astar, Isis, Nut. Because the devil has many names. You know, Jesus Christ has many names. God has many names. So is the devil. The devil has names as... Baal. He has the names of Tammuz, Zeus, Apollo, the Dragon spacecraft, International Space Station. I. I don't get involved in all that space nonsense. He that made the earth, that's God, and Jesus by His power. He's established the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his discern or discretion. God made it. God designed it. And man forever and religion changes it. Charlie Darwin's going to have one day stand before the God of the creation of all the earth and have to give account to all the error he has done. And there were teachers before Charles Darwin. I read of accounts in, in a book where, you know, the earth was on the back of a turtle, blah, 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 blah. It can't be. In Genesis chapter 1 says the turtles came after the earth. But I, I, they didn't have the writing. Actually, they did have the writing. But when he utters his voice, God, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens, plural, above our head. He causes the vapors to descend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain. And you thought it was, you know, the dispensation of the clouds and the warm and cold front and all that. Ah, oh, God. And bringeth forth the wind out of his treasure. The wind is a treasure. Every man's brutish, animal-like. In his knowledge, what's man know about the creation? Every founder is confounded by the graven image. We keep running back to that graven image. His molten image is falsehood. 
And there's no breath in them. The moment you cut that tree, there's no life in that tree. There are vanity, empty, nothing. The work of errors. So what's the problem with the Christmas tree? What the foundation of that tree? Paganism. That Christmas tree is associated with idols of worship and imagery and idolatry. That's the biblical foundation. If that is the Christmas tree, look at the context of the chapter. And many of the Christians today will make sure that that tree has more water than you would have a prayer life. There is no breath in them. They are abandoned in work of errors in time of their visitation. Here's their visitation and they shall perish. You're going to take that tree out. You're going to cast it out. And they're going to put it in a wood chipper and it's going to be wood chips in your local park. Or you can get those free wood chips if you contact your city authority. The portion of Jacob. Okay, now Israel. It's not like them. Verse 2 to 15 has been all about the heathen. And not about the Jewish people. For he is, a, for he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of the inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You see that Christmas tree and idolatry comes from the heathen. Many of the people who are in the church today are Christians. Most of them came out from being a heathen. And you know that these Christmas trees in Germany and England have been long celebrated and had nothing to do with the Christ child. Until one particular church of Constantine came in and then we, we inverted, we married, much marriage together and we brought that tree of the Druids into a false Christianity of a church. And they co-mingled. And today I call the Baptist Church the Baptist Catholic Church because she, the Baptist Church, have taken the traditions and the ways and the falseness of old Mother Harlot Church herself. And the Baptists today, in their church, they don't want to teach about Mother Harlot Catholic Church because they did. The congregation may find out, hey, you know, we're doing some Mother Harlot things. And somebody may come in the congregation of the church and challenge the pastor and challenge the people of the church and we got to shut him up. We got to tell him, go away. Because we love to sin. Didn't we, didn't we read something about that, Jeremiah? And we love to do so. Jeremiah, the, the words of a great man by the wisdom of God said, there's nothing new under the sun. If it's not about the Christmas tree, why is it that many, many, many pastors that I know and sat under them and sat on the other side of their desk as some way defended against their Christmas tree? In Jeremiah chapter 10. Gather up thy wares out of the land. O oh, inhabitant of the fortress. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at once. Babylon's coming. You know the men that get those trees, that cut down those trees, bring them in their house? You know the men that make those idols? The men that make those images? You know what God's telling Jeremiah to tell the nation of Israel? Those dead dogs are coming. Because you're more vile than they are. 
You know what the church age is today? I'm talking about the Christian. I'm talking about those that are washed in the blood of Jesus. You're more vile than the, than the world. Because you have brought the world in. How many Christians, and I mean Christian church, Baptist, whatever, there are saved people and they are under the banner of sodomites. Because this is the sodomite month. They call it El whatever, Gudubi da Gudubi da. Uh, I call it what the Bible says, sodomy, sodomites. And they will defend those sodomites and their sins. Like Benjamin defended the sodomites in the book of Judges. And some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. I heard a preacher one time. You know, we, we studied about the Benjamin and how good they were. I'm like, <laughs> you didn't read about how they defended the... the you don't study your... Oh, that's right, you skipped the rest of that book, didn't you? Uh-huh. We'll distress them, and they will find it so. Woe is me for my hurt. My wound is grievous, but I said, truly... This is a grief, and I must bear it. Ain't nothing I can do. I gotta live with it. My tabernacle is spoiled. It's home. It's surrounding. All my cords, that's what holds the tent. The tabernacle is a tent. The ropes hold the tent. Are broken. You ain't got much of a house. If you're living in a tent, and your tent ropes are broken... I mean, that's like, there's two campers, and they're out in the middle of, 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 of the woods somewhere, and they got, they set up a campsite, and it's the middle of the night, and one of the guys, you know, he's laying in the back, he's looking, oh, how great, this, look at this place, it's beautiful, look at the stars, look how wonderful it is out there, beauty, and the one laying next to him says, yeah, look at the fact this, somebody stole our tent. Well, this tent has not been stolen. It's fallen down. I had that one time when I, I used to go camping. The tent, and you know what? It's hard to get out of a tent that's fallen down. My children are gone from me. They are not. The expression, they are not. What was the expression of Joseph? And he is not. I don't know if he's dead, but he's gone. There's a possibility he's dead. There's a slight possibility. That's what that expression. Jacob didn't know. Our children are gone. They could be dead. You know, when you read about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, you know, you never read about their, their family. Now, they could be there just carnal and or they, you know, nothing spectacular. But presently, you don't read about them. Where were his family? Is my relative dead? Is he still alive? You know, with Esther, Mordecai would, would, would be by the gate. How's she doing? What's up with her? There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore. I ain't got no help. And to set up my curtains. You know, Paul was a tent maker. Aquila and Priscilla were tent makers. For the pastors. Now these are people who took care of animals. Sheep. Goats. And there are people in the church who ain't called pastors. Are become brutish, animal like. You know how often that word brutish shows up? And have not sought the Lord. Oh, that fits this church age. You know, we, uh, we got to give them Malachi message for them to give an offering because we can't trust the Lord to pay our bills. Then they get up there and preach about faith. 
Therefore they shall not prosper. Ooh. And they're all their flocks shall be scattered. You know, churches are closing. Churches are folding. Behold, the noise of the brute is come. That's the army. A great commotion out of the north country, Babylon, to make the cities of Judah desolate and the dead of dragons. That's lizards and reptiles. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. How I love you before Jesus. Oh, give me the presents I want, oh, Santa. How we reject Jesus. Oh, we'll defend our pieces of wood. We may not go to church, but God would. Oh, look at that Christmas tree. Don't think about the Lord. There are Christian family children. They're out there looking for Santa Claus, praying to Santa Claus, writing letters to Santa Claus, warning Jesus Christ. There are Christian family children. Can I get the next Harry Pooper book? I've had two mag magicians in two churches, and I try to help them to stop their magician work. It's a sin, it, and the pastors went against me. In one of them churches, you wouldn't be a well-known preacher. I allowed it. Behold, the noise of the brute is come, the great commotion in the north country, make the city of Judah desolate, and the dead of dragons. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not a man that walketh in the direct of It's God. You see, God gives a man a free will. All right, here you are. You want to go the right way? You want to do right? All right, here's the way to walk. Here's the path. Then we flunked and failed. Here we are. You want to do wrong? You want to do it? There's that way. Go ahead. And God will direct that path. And if you want an illustration of that, read Pilgrim's Progress. God did not, uh, when, when Pilgrim wanted to go the right way, God didn't send all the angels to him. <laughs> he didn't. And then when Pilgrim went the wrong way, he didn't, you know, smack Pilgrim over the head with, with a two by four and pick him up and put him on the right. He didn't do that. But I'll tell you what Pilgrim did after he made the wrong decision. He put up signs. And you know it's a shame that some of these pastors, listen, I'm speaking out of spirit, they come along and they get their axe and they chop that sign down. And he puts up a sign. All are welcome. The, the giant of, of despair castle. Was it only Pilgrim, and I think it was Faithful, I'm not sure it was Faithful, I forget the other one. Or did the giant despair's wife say, take him out in the yard and show him all the bones of all the Pilgrims that have come our way? Oh Lord, now this is this is one of the first verses I learned when I first got saved. Not the first one, but one of the first ones. Oh Lord, correct me. Chasten me. I wanted to do and I still want to do right. With judgment. Now you match that verse to what Paul says we are to judge ourselves. We are to look at our life. And there are times I just go up to the Lord and say, Lord, all right, it's 
quiet, middle of the night, nothing going on, nothing. Except my neighbor's dogs. All right, Lord. What sins are hampering me, fellowship, and pleasing you? There's one particular sin. Today I involved in that sin. I repent of those sins. It's wrong. I'm a man. I'm a sinner. There are sins. But not with thy anger. See, there are people that come up to you, judge not least you be you better be judging your life. Especially if you're a Christian, you don't want an angry God to come after you. Now, the anger of God's not okay, he's not gonna be too quick. The wrong thing to do is when a child's done something wrong and you drag him into that bedroom wherever you go and you just start beating the daylights out. That, that's not the time. It's, you know, calm down. Think it over for a moment. Tell the child what they've done. Chastise them. Give them a hug. And tell them you love them. It's funny, this is you've done wrong. I've sinned against God. I've sinned against God with my family and my daughter. I don't want to do it, and I do it, and I'm sorry. But I don't want the anger of God. I want to judge me. The Lord correct me, but with judgment, not in anger. Why? Turn the page. At least thou bring me to nothing. You realize you can sin so much and you can get the anger of God. To get the illustration, you know, the, the child steals the cookie that mom says, you know, don't steal the cookie. Dad chastises his son and so I don't care. Don't listen. I, I'm going to go in here and steal another one. And the world and their children are like that today. They don't care. They I heard a preacher say, that this, this is not me, I heard a preacher say, he had in his office a guy who was molesting three-year-olds and smiling. What's God going to do to that guy? Nothing, because nothing will avail. And you realize, what you see what the world is today? Not the world, the lost people. Do you know if the Lord tarries, that's what the church is going to be like soon? Listen, I, I, I've seen husband and wife don't care about each other and rag on each other. i got a pastor right now, he supports, loves his wife, and, and, and publicly declares on how much he loves his wife, and he's not ragged on her at once. Amen. I've heard other preachers bragging on their wives and bragging on wives and all that in marriage. When God has done all he could to try to get you right and you're not going to do right, what does it avail? Nothing. And the churches won't get right and the churches won't repent and, and, and they think they're doing right and they're doing wrong. Jesus Christ walks out of the church, closes the door, and says, Anybody want to come out? And the devil walks in. Pour out that fury upon the heathen that know thee not. Don't you try saying that. that that's one of David's expressions. Oh, Lord, get him. Oh, Lord, kill him. That's not today. Jesus says, love thy name. There's a guy at the farmer's market. He's angry at us. Man, my heart has been burdened to pray for him. Something's troubling him. I don't know what it is. But I want to see that man get right. I want to see that man's family get right. I want to see him get right with God. 
I don't take pleasure in that guy getting beat up to whatever it is of life. Jeremiah tells the Lord, hey, Babylon's coming to destroy him. The Old Testament Jews could say that because that was in the law. What was that? Anybody that curses the Jew gets cursed. That's what Jeremiah is telling them. Now, Babylon will be cursed later. Don't you pray that. We're not to hate anybody. And upon the families that call not on thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob. There is to be anybody that. And devoured him. And consumed him. And have made his habitation death. And that's what happened. But. Let me tell you that. That's not Babylon's fault. That's Judah's fault. That's Israel's fault. Now let me tell you what God told the, told the world. Anybody curses that Jew and Babylon is, Babylon is going to get their butt kicked. Babylon is going to suffer. Why? Because the Bible says, cursed be, that, that curses that Jew. 